Your STO IIP in million cubic meter. What does that stand for? STO IIP. S stock tank oil initially in place. Uh, in cubic millions of cubic meters, uh, it's um, the oil in place actually physically present in the ground. It's like a static resource until you physically produce it. Then it's not a stock tank oil initially in place. Then it becomes production. So this is a volume of oil which is in underground in the reservoir. Is that a notional figure or it is standardized because the oil content, the specific gravity may vary and if and there are so many uncertainties and unknowns. So how do you compare one well with another using the STO IIP? Well, the, the stock tank oil initially in place, uh, stock tank means it's uh, at uh, 15, uh, it's one atmosphere pressure and 15 degrees centigrade. So that's what stock tank means. It's a standard temperature pressure, STP. Uh, so uh, it, even though underground in the reservoir where the uh, oil and gas is resident or present, uh, it's at a higher pressure uh, and elevated temperature. But you, um, what you state uh, here um, as for measurement is a stock tank, which is 15 degrees centigrade, one atmosphere pressure. This is a um, uh, what's called a PDF, a probability density function against the stock tank oil initially in place. It's the oil in the ground. This is for five different uh, uh, types. And um, the green <coughs> um, line shows it starts off at one, which means it's a discovery. And uh, the, the others, uh, the, the red one right at the bottom, is very, very small prospect. And whereas the, the green, you already made a discovery. And uh, so you can read off the P90 and the P50 and P10s and what the volumes are. And those give you the a low, middle, and high for each one of those. And the, uh, the only one which is discovery is the green. The others are all have lower probability of uh, uh, discovery. I like to get a perspective of uh, production costs for the various types of uh, oil field, like from uh, from the ground versus shallow water versus deep water, and onto like what you have in the U.S. shale gas, right? So do you have the kind of cost structures that makes, for example, like capital carp or Sumbawang? you know, marines uh, doing all these deep sea uh, oil rigs, where's the line where it's become uh, economically viable or not viable production? Uh, well, that's, uh, again, an uh, uh, excellent question. Um, uh, obviously, uh, if you go into, uh, let's start off with the deep water. Uh, deep water, um, um, a well, you know, uh, can cost, exploration well can cost anything um, up to $100 million. So offshore West Africa, Nigeria, I know very well because I spent four years there. Uh, a deep water well, uh, you know, $80, $80 million or $100 million um, per well, just uh, exploration. Uh, Gulf of Mexico, um, uh, certainly going back a few years, uh, it would still be close to about $70, $80 million. Um, uh, so deep water wells are generally quite expensive, um, partly because the rig rate is very high. Uh, yeah, a, a typical rig rate would be about a million dollars a day. Um, and uh, uh, so you would take uh, something like uh, 45 to 60 days to drill and complete, uh, and drill and test. Um, and, uh, um, and then also the associated logistics because you gotta have uh, supply boats uh, um, uh, etc. There are some things you know, other things you don't know. Some things you can control, some things you can't. You can control um, what, when you dr where you drill a well, where you put a completion, the size of the pipe that you put into the ground to produce, how much oil you're going to produce, what the, s the size of the facilities are. Um, whereas you can't control how much the oil in the ground is. And you don't know how much water there is this underground. Usually you find water as well. This is the, uh, what's called aquifer. 
if you build a too big a uh, facility, uh, then the reserves will run, run out before the facilities are worn out. If, if your plateau rate is too high, the reserves will run out before the facilities are worn out. If your peak rate is too low, then the facilities wear out before um, our reserves are run through. So the key thing is you have to build the right size facility at the top. In other words, optimize your investment. All those economics and uh, break-even points with the, 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 the cost of uh, production and exploration, at what stage of the process do you work them out? You, you, you actually um, uh, look at the different uh, price, oil price scenarios um, up front, uh, and that's part and parcel of the risk and uncertainty analysis. So uh, typically, uh, depending upon what your oil price projection is, who could have predicted three months ago that the oil price is going to go down to, you know, less than $70? Nobody knew. It's a crystal ball gazing. I bet you none of the bankers present here knew that. Uh, Nobody does. Uh, this, that's great uncertainty. So how do you de-risk that? You, you take a range of all prices. Every company does that. Um, so uh, typically, um, let's say, before the current um, oil price decline, uh, early this year, let's say, uh, the last four years, the oil price has been about $100 per barrel. Uh, so the oil uh, companies would have been looking at uh, uh, something like uh, Seventy dollars to ninety dollars and one hundred ten dollar uh, decks, if you like, uh, to uh, de-risk their portfolio. But I know that there's some companies in the states they were looking at even fifty-five dollars per barrel. Uh, only some companies, uh, but the vast majority they were looking at the higher end. Uh, where do they, do they get their numbers from? You might say, where do they get that range from? They actually get it from uh, uh, market analysts, and also they, they have internal analysts too. Um, and uh, then they put that into, into the mix and see uh, which, one is, uh, which one they want to use for their uh, forward projections.